Does it say in the gospel of Acts? The gospel of Romans? The gospel of Jude? The gospel of the Revelation? The gospel is Jesus Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. There's your God. That is the complete gospel of Jesus Christ. He came, died, was buried and rose again. That's the complete gospel of Jesus Christ. You can't add anything to that. You can't put any other Buddha, Krishna, Muhammad, anybody else in that. That is fundamentally the cross of Jesus Christ. That's it. You can't add anything to it and you can't take anything away from it. That's the gospel. Death, burial, and resurrection. What should be preached? What should be preached? Huh? What should be preached? Go to the book of Luke. Somebody said, I don't know Sam, where Brother Beard going to say. We're going to get that revelation too in a minute. If any man preach any other gospel, then what is preached, let him be what? Accursed. But you ask 15 different preachers what the gospel is, you're going to get 15 different answers. Yet, if he preach another gospel, which is not another, let him be accursed. Take a look at the book of Luke. When you come to Luke, Matthew 24, Luke 10, uh, Mark 10, Luke 21, talks about the last days and all the things that will be happening And then, as Luke goes on, the beloved physician traveled with Paul later on and wrote this gospel according to Luke. Jesus has already been crucified, buried, and rose again. Take a look at Luke 24. Jesus now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning. Daniel 9, 24 through 27. Daniel 9, 27, he will confirm the covenant with many for how long? One week. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many days in a week? Well, it can be hours, days, weeks, months, years, millennial. Now, day, your yom, the day, can be a little physical day. It can be a span of time in weeks, months, years, or millennium. Hallelujah. And every one of them overlap. So in the last days, he will be prepared for an hour, a day, a month, and a year. I'm going to plunge you, not me, but the Lord's going to plunge you in Revelation today. We're going to talk about the breastplate. Hell, Hallelujah. fire. Somebody said hell fire. It's hail fire and brimstone. Not hell fire. Every preacher get up here, it's hell fire and brimstone. No, it ain't. It's hail, 
fire and brimstone. That ain't, you understand, that ain't hell Gehenna. But that's the way they preach it. It's hell. Fire and brimstone in the breastplate of Jason. We're going to get in the book of the Revelation some. Hallelujah. The four horsemen of the apocalypse. And somebody said, my wife's the fifth one. You wished. Yeah, you wished. Hallelujah unto God. You wished. He'll confirm that covenant with many for one week. Now take a look at this in this gospel. The greatest depth of revelation you'll ever read is in the gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And Jesus took his disciples and he entered into the ship. Whoa. Somebody said, well, that's easy enough. They just walked into the boat and got into the boat. Until you find out the old ship of Zion's are gathered together into him. Passing over to the other side. We got to pass over. Then you start looking at things spiritually and all that God did, and he started his cycles right there. He started that cycles of the 42 months right there. Consummating, culminating in the sevens. So the book of the Revelation is called the book of sevens. The consummation. That's all, folks. Curtains. It's over. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, minister, something. You? You, you got to taste that pulpit. Now you and Brother Don are going to get there, and you fight those devils. You fight them right now. Hallelujah. How many years are you in that prison system? 20 years? There's one right there. You're in a prison ministry right now, aren't you? All right, y'all get together. We need a prison ministry out here. Y'all need to do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wouldn't hurt you boys if you see what happens behind prison bars. Take them there with you a time or two. I'll give you a license where you can get in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. See what the, see what they see what's happening behind. I went I went behind one prison over there, and I said, oh, oh, brother Payne said, I want you to go over this good friend of mine. He's behind prison bars, and he was sitting back here crying, crying. They shut those old doors behind you, <laughs> quank, quank, you know. Think, you ain't getting out of here, bless the Lord Jesus. You ain't, uh, you ain't gonna make no jail breaks around here. You minister to them in there, and they crying and everything, smoking a cigarette. Gonna sit there and talk. He loved Jesus, smoking a cigarette. You know what I'll tell him? You don't love God. You're a liar. I'll tell that convict right there. You are a liar. Had one over there. He said, what do you mean? He said, I love Jesus. No, you don't. Because if you love him, you do the works of him. You'll walk as he walked. If you love Jesus, you'll walk as he walked. Well, I love Jesus. No, you don't. You're sorry. Not because you did, but you're sorry you got caught. You're not sorry for what you did. You're sorry you got caught. That's what you did. There's no true repentance there. So we go into that jail President, the first thing I'm going to preach to those people over there is repentance, true repentance. I ain't going to sit there and sit there and bear your burden. My job ain't to bear your burden. Mine is to put you to him and lift that burden. Amen. Hallelujah. I ain't going to sit there and pat you on the back. You know, we're we going to pray for you. I ain't praying for you for nothing. First thing you're going to do is repent. If you, if you mean business with God and you really want your soul saved, hallelujah unto God, then you repent. That guy said, well, I repent. I said, okay, fine. I said, you're going to live rug drop? Yes, I am. I said, okay, first thing we got to do is give him a cigarette, grab the cigarettes on there, and I stomp a package of cigarettes right there. He liked it, came unglued. I said, say another word. You smoke a cigarette, can you have the Holy Ghost? You smoke a cigarette? Can you have the Holy Ghost and smoke a cigarette? Huh? Then don't sit there and lie on Jesus and tell that sucker he's going to heaven when he's going to bust hell wide open. I'm going to tell you in there, people are tired of being lied to and cheated, more lies told at a funeral than you can shake a stick at. If you're going to hell, say, if you, if you don't repent, you're going to hell. Amen. 
I didn't come in here to pat you on the head and win flins and flus people. I came in here to give you the good news of Jesus Christ and what it takes for you to make heaven. If you don't like that, then bless God, then let somebody else go in there and pat them on the head and say, well, things are gonna be better for you and if you want me to tell something to your wife, I will and run around and be their little errand boy. Hallelujah unto God. But I'm gonna tell you, if you don't repent, you're gonna bust hell wide open. Hallelujah. So you can run out there, smoke your little old Winston cigarettes and your Marlboro flip tops and you're gonna bust hell wide open. Hallelujah unto God. You repent and you get baptized in the name of Jesus. You can't ask Jesus to come into your heart. You can't ask Jesus to come in and take you and your old sorry filthy flesh. Your body of sin has to be destroyed by baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Otherwise you are hell bound. No other way. And I won't tell you, pat you on the head and tell you what kind, uh, and you're a good man, but you just got to, oh, you because know, you've asked Jesus to come in heart. Jesus didn't do nothing. <laughs> when you ask him to come into your heart, uh, he didn't come. Uh, somebody said he forgave him our sins. He don't forgive you of his sins. Uh, they have to be washed away uh, by the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, it has to be obeyed, uh, or it does not have an effect. Uh, it will do nothing except what the word says, uh, and that alone. So somebody else, a Baptist church coming in and said, that's Jesus coming to your heart. you going to hell. Amen. Like a bullet. Amen. That's how fast you're going to hell. You're going to hell by the speed of light. You're going to burn in there with Adolf. I tell him up there, you want to burn with Adolf Hitler? Is he your brother? Huh? How about Malcolm X? Is that your man? Huh? How about Stalin? Is that your man? Hallelujah. Is that your man? You want to burn with them down there? You want to see your brother in hell? Adolf? Hallelujah. I ain't talking Rudolph. I'm talking Adolf. Bless God, Adolf Hitler. Somebody said, I despise him. Well, that's where you're going. That's where you're going. Somebody said, well, I don't see why a cigarette kill your soul to hell. Cigarette ain't going to kill you to hell. Your heart is. But your heart ain't right. How you know? Because you're smoking a cigarette. Amen. I'll bust your jaw if I don't get it straight ahead. I'll get it on an uppercut. But I'll get you one way or another. Hallelujah, Hallelujah unto God. It's time that you ministers be ministers. Hallelujah unto God. Don't back up on the word and tell him just because he wants to feel better that he's going to heaven. He ain't going to heaven. He's going to bust hell wide open. What are you going to do? You're going to have to get a clearance in there so you can go in and baptize them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody said, well, I don't know if we can do that in there because they like to try to kill one another. Well, they're going to die anyway. Amen. They're going to die anyway. Hallelujah. So if I don't get clearance to bring and have a baptism in there, then I ain't going in. You know what I'm saying, Brother Danny, if I can't get a clearance going over the baptism, I ain't going in. Because there ain't no other way. Somebody said, they, 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 they got a, they, they, we don't have to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ to be saved. Well, what, who told you that, devil? Who told you that? What book are you reading out of? Huh? What book are you reading out of? You ain't reading out the gospel I'm reading. Hallelujah. My Bible said he'll confirm the covenant with many for one week. He has given him for a covenant to the people. That covenant is a holy covenant. They'll have indignation against the holy covenant. That holy covenant is nothing at all but Christ Jesus. Y'all want this word, you're sitting there like a knot on love. I ain't gonna waste my time. You wanna hear this word, fine. If you don't, we'll shut this thing up and go to the house. Hallelujah to God. Jesus, I know you're already saved, sanctified, and you're filled with the Holy Ghost. You're on your way. Hallelujah to God. It's like that sister Spugendike got up in church. Testify, sister. Did y'all pray for me? The refrigerator broke down. Tars blew up on the car. They're about to evict me out of the house. I can't pay my electric bill. Devil's been on my case all week long. Bless his holy name. Let me tell you something. You know why you're in a financial bind you're in? Because you don't give to God. Amen. Give it to be given to you. Put down, put good measure. Running, up, running over some men giving to your bosom. You don't give. That's what your problem is. You got, you got money problems, it's because you don't give. Amen. That's your problem. Hallelujah. You give, you can't outgive God, but bless God, you can't outpenny pinch him either. Hallelujah. 
Everybody said, well, what, what would you? I'll, I'll tell you what I did. I sold out everything I had, put them up there, put them on the altar, and I went out there and said, nothing's mine. It's all his. Sold every dime I had out and gave to him. Amen. And I put it all on him. Somebody said, you're crazy. Yeah, I got crazy. I lost my mind. I got the mind of Christ. What are you going to say? What are you going to do? You going to bargain up there? Somebody said, he's a bargaining man. He gets to the... He gets to the uh, uh, those gates of heaven up there, he'll, he'll start dealing with old Peter. Let me tell you something. You think Peter's at the pearly gates? Well, he's got the keys to the kingdom. That was open up on Pentecost, son. <laughs> Ain't no gate to heaven. That gate to heaven right there, that eastern gate that those stupid stupid uh, Muslims over there trying to board up over there thinking Jesus come through that gate. Ain't got nothing to do with it. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's going to confirm that covenant with many for one week. But Jesus was cut off in the midst of week, not for himself. And who shall declare his generation? Whenever every little Bible prophecy preacher in the world talks about this generation, well, it's a 40 year generation. No, it's, it, that didn't work, so let's see. Rosh Hashanah is uh, May the 14th, 1948, and Israel became a nation, so uh, uh, let's see. Uh, the 40-year generation, that'd be 48, be 88, so in Rosh Hashanah in 1988, we're going to have 88 reasons why the Lord's coming in 88. <laughs> now, some of you were caught up in it. You just won't say so now because I'll embarrass you. Hallelujah. Bless your pee-picking hearts. Well, he was a good man. He might be a good man, but he's just dumb, stupid, ignorant as a bag of hammers, bless God in the word of God. I sat over on the mine of balls waiting for the Lord because I'm going to hasten his return. You ain't hastening nothing. You sitting over there, hallelujah, camped out on the mountain. <laughs> hallelujah. Well, I give you a need for effort. Now, if somebody says, are you hitting Brother Heron now? No, I ain't. Because he had enough sense when he heard the truth, bless God to get into the truth. Amen. Well, he followed Mulliken. He has a Mulliken stew is what it was. They got stewed. Hallelujah unto God. Self-proclaimed prophet. You don't believe I'm prophet? Bless God, you ask me. I'll give you a word. Yeah, you gave a word. Didn't come to pass. It didn't come to pass Amen. hallelujah you like that pulpit <laughs> you better be praying for me to get my visitation amen Amen. Because yours. Amen. You're coming after mine. I need, amen. <laughs> amen, brother. <laughs> and your life will never be the same. Amen. It's going to be a total different hearing. And you won't even know yourself. Good. That's good. In Jesus' name. Amen. You have the Lord come into your life. I knew. When Brad Prone said, that God going to give you a visitation, I said, before I get mine, you're going to have yours. He didn't no more believe that than a man in the moon. And we know there ain't no man in the moon. Amen. We've all been lied to. Well, look up there, son, at that uh, moon up there. That's a big uh, deal of cheese. Really? Y'all ever hear that? How about, uh, how about the one out there? Well, it's raining when the sun is shining. It means the devil's beating his wife. I didn't know the devil had a wife. You got a wife? What, what's your scripture and verse on that? What's your scripture and verse on that? Huh? Well, you lost your tooth. A tooth fairy's coming. A fairy? The big one. The biggest lie of all. Santa Claus. That's the biggest blessed God lie. Oh, St. Nick. St. Nicholas. 
Hallelujah. And Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer flying around in the sky, and you tell your kids that and expect them to believe whatever you say. That's the biggest lie. When Brother Brad was sitting up there five years old, I said, son, I'm going to tell you something. He said, Santa Claus coming tonight, and I said, you're looking at him. <laughs> Hallelujah. There ain't no Santa Claus. I said, yeah, you're looking at him. <laughs> Same other daughter. What did Brad do? He's going to convert the whole first grade. Goes to school and says, let me tell all y'all something. There ain't no Santa Claus. <laughs> I get a note from school. Your son has been, <laughs> he has got everybody upset up here. Tell them that there ain't no Santa Claus. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> See, he ain't even six years old calling disruption in the kindergarten class. So help me God, it happened, didn't it? He's showing disruption in the kindergarten class. Why? Because he's telling them the truth. And it's the same way in the whole world. You tell them the truth and they got to regurgitate. So since you've been speaking this word, hallelujah, my stomach's been churning within me. You need love. Hallelujah. Bless God, the crop of the Bible, the word of God is love. There is no other gospel except the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is not another. Either you love it or you hate it. Gather, scatter, you're for it or you are. I guess that. Ain't no ifs, ands, and buts. Sit down. Hallelujah. Ain't no ifs, ands, and buts about it. Either you is or you ain't. Either you gather or you scatter. Hallelujah. There is no compromise. Somebody said, Brother Beard, the only ones that ever, I've heard this from preacher, the only ones that ever going to listen to you is the blacks. I say, why? Because you're too hard. The gospel's too hard. I say, where'd I get out of the word? Oh, it's not you getting out of the word. You're just a fanatic on that word. It's just word, 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 quoting scripture. And they said, the only one you're ever going to get is going to be the black. Well, I told that white boy that if that's all I get, then that's all I want. Because if you don't want this gospel, bless God, they are my brothers. I'll take the black all day long Why you, you know what I had one minister told me, he's real big in the UPC, you know what he told me? He said, I'll check that man's ministry out. He said, there ain't nothing. I said, why? He said, because he may have thousands of people, but most of them are black. So they couldn't be real. <laughs> You'll be surprised of the clicks that go on. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Japheth. And Ham's cursed with a curse. And he had Cush. Cush is Ethiopia. Ethiopia is a black man. So therefore, there's an eternal curse upon the black man. He's got to be a servant to the right. Where in the world do you read that? Where do you read it? Where do you read it? The South in the Bible Belt they believed that mess. KKK was alive and well. Brother burned old Tim Joyner's church over there right out of Denham Springs. Burned it to the ground. He said, Brother Beard, what am I going to do? I said, build that thing back. Tell him to come out there that you'll, that you'll call them in and you'll press, press charges to the, to the fullest extent of the law. You know what he did? He left and married a girl in Belize and went down there and preached the gospel in Belize because he's in Walker, Texas. He didn't want to build another one and get burned out again. You know what? You burn me out, bless God, we'll do it again. Amen. And we'll do it again. Amen. And we'll do it. I've had people come to the tent over there and say, we, you said something against the uh, uh, Knights of Columbus. You said something against the Masons out here. We don't take kindly to that. And say, well, you see that right there? That's it. You can walk in this tent. There's nothing. There's no chain in here. Ball holding you. There's that. There's, yeah, you can go there. Well, you're going to get trouble. You keep running your mouth like that, you're going to get trouble. I said, fine. Let me have a double portion of it. 
Let me have a devil portion. Bring your gun in here next time, hot shot. See if you can band us or break us from preaching this Bible and every one of you masons going to hell because you're going to do the works of Solomon. You make me sick. You bind yourself out of your body under all kinds of curses. That you're not, you're not your own. You can't bind this body, you know. Have my tongue torn out by the roots, my eyes plucked out of the eyes, my tongue torn out by its roots, my body cast into the sea where the tide ebbs, fl- ebbs uh, twice and uh, I ebb t- flows uh, twice in 24 hours should I knowingly or willingly violate or transgress any part of the interference of Mason's obligation, so help me God. And you bind yourself under those penalties. I had one old Master Mason said over there, said you keep doing that, said that uh, God will kill you. No, God ain't going to kill me. I'm standing up for his word. Do you understand? You stand up for his word. They can come in there and put a gun to your head, and that gun won't go off. If it does go off, he'll take that bullet, and it'll go somewhere else. There's nothing that devil can do to you. Somebody said, you don't know that. Yeah, I do. Been shot at. Had him come in with butcher knives. Going to cut the preacher. Been shot in the face of the maze. Hallelujah unto God. Ain't nothing they can do to you, Brother Don, Brother Robert. There's nothing they can do to you. You can come in there. You can threaten us all you want to. Bless the Lord God. You see that door? The way you come in, the same way to lead you out. Hallelujah. We don't tempt. We don't, we don't shrink. This is no fear or favor. We will not be compromising this word. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. You got a problem with that? Then you got a problem. Amen. You don't have a problem with me. You got a problem with him. And I hope that you live till in the morning. I really do. Somebody said, you, are you, are you threatening me? I said, nope. I just want you to know the Lord Jesus is going to judge you. Amen. Now, just as sure as he made heaven and earth and he made green apples, he's going to judge you. Hallelujah. So you run your mouth all day long, judge, and you can tell me how it is over here in the county in this parish. But bless the Lord, God know you of a certainty. God's going to judge you. Amen. Hallelujah. You can rip, you can lie, cheat, steal. You can do everything and plot and lay snares for the righteous. But know you of a certainty that God will destroy your soul in hell. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So if we don't bend or break for that devil out there, we sure ain't going to do it for you. Hallelujah. Long time ago, I was playing a tent revival, playing an organ. Preacher didn't show up as usual. Hallelujah. And I was in Oberlin, Louisiana. Tent's just about, just about packed out every night. And they'd come and they said, where's the preacher? I try to find a preacher. You a preacher? Yeah, you're preaching tonight. As long as you're in God Jesus' name. Somebody said, we ain't got no preachers. You're going to have to preach. Oh, Lord Jesus, I'm going to have to preach again. And I dread it. So I'd get that Bible up there, and uh, I'd preach with whatever I could, hit them with both barrels, just everything I could. Hallelujah. Great tribulation, Jacob's trouble, it's fixing to hit. The Illuminati Trilateral Commission, America's going to hell in a handbasket, and I'd preach and hit them with everything I could hit them with. You one-eyed devils, you got a TV in the house, all of you going to hell. You sit there and watch that TV, bless the Lord. God, you ain't going to read no word. You got good housekeeping woman. You'd rather read that in the Bible, you're going to hell. I put a lot of people in hell. Hallelujah. But then I got through that service that night, and I said, they're about to wrap that organ up, and I saw a vision. And that vision, I had $1,000 bills stacked up on that organ, a B3, just like that one. And it went four feet high. Rows and rows of $1,000 bills so high up there I couldn't even see. Couldn't see myself behind that organ. That devil said, if you'll just play that organ and sing and don't preach this word, this Bible, I'll give you all that money, $1,000 bills. I got off there. I didn't know my right hand from my left. I'd had the Holy Ghost about four months. I was 28 years old. I said, uh, I don't know a lot of things, but devil, I know this. I know where that came from. And where I preached a little, now I'm going to preach a lot. I couldn't hit the broad side of a barn spiritually. But bless the Lord God, I made up my mind. Everything I had, I was going to let them have it every night. Wasn't much, but whatever I had, my little pea shooter, I was going to let them have it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My little sword was nothing but a little old pocket knife, but bless the Lord God, I was was going to cut him with that pocket knife. Hallelujah. You know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. That's what's wrong with y'all. 
You want to sit back here and think you've got something in the Word because you got a little, you got a little candy stick. You saw this, you saw that. You got a little candy stick. This, this is mine. This is what God gave me. Well, you better get that whole word. You better get it from Genesis to Revelation. You better get all that God's got for you and be willing to move when he does and say, God, I'm willing to change. And Brother Beard, I'm preaching to you because you're fixing to have the biggest change in your life. And that's thus saith the Lord God. Amen. Bless God. Amen. And I want it. Amen. Somebody said, bless God, you need it. Because you were the meanest, armriest, obnoxious people I ever saw in my life. <laughs> yep, I agree with you, Dad. I agree with you. Hallelujah unto God. But I want to be whatever he wants me to be. Amen. And right now, sorry, this is it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. When he, some of you are going to have visitations in here. Somebody said, I ain't going to have no visitations. Some of you have never seen angels before. You're going to see angels. No big deal. What do you do when you see an angel? Nothing. Do you drop down and, and worship them? Nope. Nothing old man lose your reward in a voluntary humility worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he knoweth not, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. You're going to see angels. You're going to see them. And when you do, there are ministering spirits. Can they take on a human form any time? Yes, they can. But the human form can't take on a spirit any time. Hallelujah. But the spirit world can come into this one anytime it wants to. But we can't go into that anytime we want to. A spiritual world, a spirit can come on in a manifestation in this realm anytime it wants to. Y'all ever seen a devil? Question. Question again. Have you ever seen a devil? Yes or no? Um, many years ago, I was laying in bed and thought I was dreaming at first. Uh, up in the distance, seen something small coming to me. It was like it was coming down a long hallway, just a little case opening door. But as it got closer, it was... Uh, about four or five foot tall, four and a half. It was short. It was small. Hooded, cloak over. It, uh, I told somebody later, I said, I know why them guys in Hollywood make them look like that because they've probably seen them. I mean, this looked like something out of Hollywood. It was it was a little goblin, ghoulish-looking thing. And uh, <clears throat> they're real. Uh, I, I didn't know anything about what? No. Oh. All right. Uh, they're real. It was, uh, and like I said, many years ago. It was uh, before I, I, I didn't, I didn't know anything about the Bible. Never picked up the Bible. Had no intentions of picking up the Bible. Uh, I was a good little Baptist boy. I was saved, smoking dope, drinking beer. You know, one of those kind of deals. No, no need for God. Knew all I needed to know about God, and all of a sudden the devil comes in the room. And um, I used to sleep with a cock and locked forty-five by my bed. Uh, one like what Brad's got now probably come out of World War Two. I'd keep the hammer cocked back on it, and you have to push that beaver tail before it'll shoot. Cock and lock, that's what they call it. I sleep with it beside my bed, and that thing come in there and was standing beside the bed. It never said a word. I started to reach for the guns automatically, and... uh I wasn't, I wasn't that scared at first. I just, there it comes. I grabbed the gun. And, uh, I, you know, the thoughts came. I didn't know anything about God. But uh, I knew I'd watched enough uh, weird television shows to know that that bullet wasn't going to do that thing no good. And later on, after, after this was all over with, uh, the thoughts came to me that if I would have shot that thing, if I'd have shot bullet go right through it, I'd hit somebody out there on that balcony, on that walkway out in front of that hotel. I was in a hotel room up in Mountain Home, Arkansas. And I'd have killed somebody, and I'd have been saying, well, it was this devil in my room. You know, it was a ghoul. It was a goblin. I didn't know what to call it back in, you know. But that's what would have happened. If I'd have pulled that trigger, it went right through the door and killed somebody, and I'd have been in the nut house because I was shooting at a demon. Um, 
I'm sitting there looking at the thing. Now, this, this, this is a weird one because, I mean, I'm wide awake. At first, I thought I was asleep, but this time, I'm, I know I'm awake. And I start cussing. Uh, that's all I knew to do. I didn't know how to say, get out here in the name of Jesus. Uh, I started cussing it, and that wasn't working. I called it every name that I could think of, and, buddy, back then, I could think of a bunch of them. And uh, it, didn't, it didn't leave. And... Uh, I didn't, I, I didn't know, maybe accidentally somehow, I don't know, maybe I said Jesus, but I know I said in the name of God and, you know, all that stuff. I mean, I'd seen the exorcist, right? <laughs> I didn't know nothing. I still don't know much. No, nothing. I don't know nothing. That thing changed. It it. Instead of being about four, four and a half foot tall, a little short thing, a little short, ugly thing, the green, it was green hue, a greenish looking thing. Uh, it just kind of grew up like that. And uh, the hood fell off of it and draped over its shoulders and looked like something that would go in a church, you know, like over there, like a choir, like a car boy. Had a little page boy, they call them page boy haircuts. You couldn't tell if it was a man or a woman or what, couldn't, just a little short crop. Like somebody might think a little choir person, but it got to be about six, seven foot tall, real tall, and light colored. It, it, instead of green, it was like real pale face and the blonde, you know, blondish looking hair, and that, and that robe was white now instead of green. And I looked at it for a minute. And I started cussing it again. I said, you look better than that other so-and-so, but you need get out of here. <laughs> and uh, it it just floated. There was a, a chest of drawers here, about four drawers high, and a lamp on top of it, and just whoosh, went right over and became that thing. Just went right into it. And I didn't know what to do. I was scared to get up. I didn't want to put my feet on the floor. I didn't want to touch anything. I didn't want, I didn't know what to do. And... Uh, and that, that's pretty much it. At, you know, later on, I talked to a friend of mine. He made jokes about it, and I got to feel a little bit better. Um, but I, I would tell this story. That, this, it's a weird story. Now, later on, and, and the scriptures would come to me as I got older and had the car wreck, started reading the Bible. Uh, God showed me in the Bible where it says that Satan himself has transformed himself into an angel of light. How much more his ministers ministers of righteousness. God was trying to show me something there. <laughs> That, that a devil can change. <laughs> he can take a shape. Look different than he did. Same devil. The devil's dressed up like a preacher boy out there. The choir, the preacher, he can look good. He ain't got no, he ain't got no uh, uh, pointed tail and pitchfork and all that stuff. He's going to look good. He's going to be exactly what you think in your mind God is supposed to be. If if you got the heart that you want that you want to smoke cigarettes and you want to drink your beer and ask Jesus in your heart, there's a Baptist devil out there. He'll preach you a gospel that you can get along with. You can go to church on Sunday. Matter of fact, you can ask Jesus in your heart once you're saved. You're always saved, and you'll go home wondering why does them people keep going to church if they're saved. The only thing different in the guy sitting on the bar stool next to you is he just ain't asked Jesus in his heart yet. All the drunks are going to heaven if they ask Jesus in their heart. That drunk coming to the tent that night. Once saved, always saved. He was going to heaven, money. He was going to heaven. We know better than that. Thank God. Later on in life, I was over at Charles Keys house. A lot of y'all met Charles Keys. I was telling this story, and there was a guy in there named Vernon Lewis. Vernon Lewis was a, a, a tough guy. He was a tough guy. Uh, I don't want to get into all the stories, but he, he helped me. Uh, whenever I was out running from the law, he helped me. And he wasn't in the same business I was in. He just decided he'd help me one time. I was needing a little help. He got to help me. And I don't want to glorify no evil. But Burnham was a tough hombre. I say he was a tough hombre. Burnham ain't around no more. I started telling that story, and... Uh, About two weeks after I told that story in that house, Vernon talked to me real serious one day. He said, I almost left you there at Charles Keyes that day. I said, why would you do that? He said, you told that story. And I said, well, what's that got to do with anything? I said, that's real. That, that really happened. He said, I know it happened. He said, I used to see one just like it. I thought you were making fun of me. He said, I, 
Well, he said, when I was a kid, I was in a Baptist church, and he said that same thing.